Hey, salutations, my friends, and thank you for joining me today. I am Sarah. So, over the last few weeks, I've been reading a light novel by the name of Blade and Bastard. I'm going to be honest with you, the only reason I even picked up this book was because of the cover. I just happened to see it on the internet one day and made a mental note to buy the book as soon as it came out. The illustrator seems to be the same guy who does the Overlord novels. It is absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, while reading the book, one of the things that interested me most is the church, specifically the mechanic that they provide to the world. But let's back up for a moment. So the setting of Blade and Bastard is actually very similar to Danmachi. There's a city and a dungeon within the city. Every day, adventurers will delve into the dungeon to slay monsters and find treasure. The further you go into the dungeon, the more difficult the monsters are. It's explained several times that, that the dungeon is incredibly dangerous. People who are considered powerful on the surface are just considered average within the dungeon. As you can imagine, with a place that dangerous and so full of treasure, there is a lot of death in this uh, story. Um, so, what happens if you're unlucky enough to get killed within the dungeon? Well, if you're lucky, your party members will drag you out to the surface. Alternatively, it's possible that uh, Iramis will find you. Iramis being one of the two main characters in the story, and I do apologize, I don't actually know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Iramis works for the local church, collecting corpses of fallen adventurers in the dungeons, which is exactly as it sounds. Iramis will go into the dungeons many times. He'll go in alone, look for corpses of dead adventurers, and drag them up to the local church. Why does he do this? Well, resurrection spells exist in this universe, and the church offers resurrection as a service for a small fee, of course. Um, now, I don't normally like resurrections in a story. Personally, I believe it makes things seem a bit cheap. Um, <laughs> probably Dragon Ball Bridge has probably one of my favorite quotes when assessing resurrections in a story, specifically the uh, Broly uh, abridged movie. Okay, so in the Dragon Ball Bridge Broly movie, essentially Broly is fighting Goku. Broly is winning the fight. Broly asks Goku how Goku would like it if Broly were to kill his son, Gohan. Goku responds, eh, I would rather you not. I mean, we have Dragon Balls, but that's like a whole day. And that's kind of my uh, biggest issue with uh, resurrection mechanics. Normally, it kind of takes some of the edge off of death. So with that in mind, this story actually still manages to introduce a resurrection mechanic without seeming cheap. But more on that a little later. Before going forward, just so you know, Blade Ambassador takes a lot of inspiration from Dungeons & Dragons. In fact, the author who wrote Blade Ambassador is actually the same guy who did Goblin Slayer. Also took many who also took many inspirations from Dungeons & Dragons. With that in mind, I wouldn't be shocked to find out there are many different gods in the story. However, this volume of the story does not actually mention more than one god, and doesn't even name the god that is mentioned. I want you to imagine this. You and the boys go into the dungeon looking for treasure, slaying monsters. At first you guys are doing well, but then Leroy gets cocky, charges forward, and gets rightfully slaughtered. Not a problem, just drag his happy ass, or whatever is left of it, back to the local church. You go ahead, pay the probably large tithe necessary from Leroy's share of the treasure, of course, and just like that, the church will resurrect your idiot friend. Everything is fine now, right? Well, maybe. You see, that mechanic I mentioned earlier is this. Resurrections can 
fail in this story. <laughs> uh, uh, excuse me. Resurrections don't actually fail. If for some reason it looks like a resurrection fail, the priest at the local church will tell you, what God is saying is that your friend lived their best lives they could, and there's no need for them to come back. And I'm just going to let that sink in for a moment. Kind of brings out the skeptic side of me, but I'm just going to ignore that for this uh, video. Now, as you heard, if your friend has lived the best life they could, the God of this world will not send them back to the world of the living. What qualifies as lived the best lives they could is fairly ambiguous and not specifically mentioned in the story. I can kind of presume that it means that the, your friend was such a good person that they deserve the eternal peace of heaven. But again, there aren't any standards mentioned in this volume. Whatever lived the best lives they could means uh, could be something entirely alien to human, to human morality. So, back to Leroy. So, God won't send Leroy back because he has already lived his best life. Yes, that is correct. Does God know that Leroy gets blackout drunk every other night, wakes up in his own piss and vomit, regularly breaks laws against public nudity, and doesn't provide support to any of his nine children? Uh, God is all-knowing? Lady, I'm about to leave you a one-star review on Yelp. Also, doesn't that mean that if you are resurrection, that the supreme being of this universe thinks you're such a giant fuck-up that you need to do better? Honestly, if you do get resurrection, how do you live with that thought going over to your head? Especially if you thought you were uh, living a, uh, let's say, virtuous life. Attention! This is my daily announcement to anyone who has died and been resurrected. <laughs> God hates you. You need to do better. Leroy? Leroy? This is the fourth time for you, Leroy. What are you doing with your life, Leroy? Why doesn't God want to keep you at his side, Leroy? Leroy? <laughs> so, even if the resurrection does fail the first time, it is possible to try the resurrection again. Essentially, you need to make a greater offering to God, and in doing so, you can try to prove to God that the world will be better off having Leroy or whoever back. Let's cut to the BS. You gotta give a greater th tithe. If you give a greater tithe, the chances of resurrecting your idiot friend will be higher. Not gonna lie, that just increases my natural skepticism in this whole thing. Anyway, this is a concept I found interesting, and it's mostly a background mechanic in the light novel that doesn't really get covered m too much in the actual story. It's one of the reasons that I'll be picking up the second volume, presuming that ever comes out. So, I was going to conclude this video for now, but just because I'm enjoying these imagined spots, let me do one more. So, one of the first scenes in the story involves two resurrections, both of which fail. What happens if one of them failed, though? Pepe... You have lived a good life. You are, a, you are of moral character. You have brought great happiness into this dark world. There is no need for you to return to the world. Please, rest now. I am proud of you, my son. Leroy, congratulate the priest on your resurrection. Off you go. Anyway, thanks for stopping by, and please smash that like button. Take care.